Hey, let's take a look at a real world example where we can get our feet wet thinking about these issues. In fact, we're going to get our feet, everything wet, not just our feet. Because a kayaker spends an afternoon paddling on a river, and that's sort of fun. Although you have to remember to wear your kayaking helmet, otherwise it could be dangerous. But if you wear the helmet, you're probably going to be okay. Anyway, here's what happens. So she travels five miles upstream, five miles downstream, in a total of six hours. It's pretty good. Now, in still water, if there were no current at all, uh, the kayaker can travel at an average speed of three miles per hour. Just based on this information, the question is asking us, what is the average speed of the river's current? You know, it's one of these questions where it sounds like we just don't have enough information because we don't know anything about the river or the current or anything. This sounds a little bit weird. The thing we've got to do is we've got to parse the information that we have. Now, first of all, let's think about this. So she's going to travel upstream. That means she's going to be fighting the current. The current's going to be pushing her, you know, this way, but she's going to be bucking the current, so she's not going to go very fast. In fact, we can figure out her speed. If her average speed is three miles, and let's say the current speed is C, then as she goes upstream, she's going to go three miles, but she's going to be pushed back by C. So her net gain is going to be three minus C miles per hour. You see that? Because the current's pushing against her, and she's fighting it, and so the difference is going to be her speed. However, when she comes back, and she comes back down, well, now she's going to go on her own three miles an hour, but the current of C is going to help her. So then her speed's going to be three plus C. See? Now that's actually some information. Let's write that down. So let's consider a going upstream and going downstream. The distance in each case, we're told, is five miles. She goes five miles up, and then she comes five miles back. So that's pretty straightforward. And what's the average speed? Well, the average speed going up, we know, is her speed minus the water speed, which is the current. Whereas going down, she's helped by the current, so it's three plus C. Now, how long does it take her to, to paddle upstream. Well, we can figure this out because we know that distance equals rate times time. So time equals distance divided by rate, which in this case is going to be 5 divided by rate, or speed, 3 minus c. Similarly here, the time it takes her to go downstream is 5 divided by 3 plus c. All right, well now we're home free because we know the whole trip took her six hours. That means that this number plus that number has to equal six and look what just happened. We produced an equation where we can solve for C. Remember C is the speed of the current. So we've got five over three minus C plus five over three plus C equals six. And notice that is an equation and we can solve it for C. And that all came out of thinking about this and parsing what we know. So let's put this together and see what happens. Well, I see lots of denominators here. Don't like that. I'll multiply by the least common multiple, which in this case will be the product of these, which will be 3 minus c multiplied by the quantity 3 plus c. And so if I do that, which I will do right now in front of you live, I'm going to multiply that by this side, and that by this side. OK, now what? Well, now I've got to do lots of distribution and simplify. So let's see what happens when we actually distribute and simplify. So I take this entire product, and I'm going to distribute it to this term, and then distribute it to this term. When I take this entire product and distribute it to this term, you can see that this factor and this factor cancel. I'm just left with 5 times that, which is actually going to be 5 times 3 plus 5 times c. So in the first instance, what we see here is 15 plus 5c. But then we have to distribute this product to the second term. In that case, we see that this factor cancels with this denominator. And so I'm just left with the 5 times all that, which after we distribute is going to be plus 15 minus 5c. See that? All right, and now what do we have on the right-hand side? 
Well, on the right-hand side, what I see here is 6 times, and I've got to multiply this out, but that's sort of easy to do. It's just going to be 9 minus c squared because the outside and the inside terms actually add to give 0. So where are we? I see 15 plus 15, that is 30. 5c minus 5c actually equals 0, so they actually go away. And I just am left with this. I can divide both sides by 6, just to simplify this a little bit. And I'm left with 5 equals 9 minus c squared. All right, and so what does that mean uh, for c? Well, I can solve this for c. Uh, how do you want to do that? Uh, I guess I'll bring everything over to the left-hand side. So I'll add c squared to both sides. So I'll see c squared. And then I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So 5 minus 9 is, is negative 4 equals 0. And now I could factor that. And I see it's a difference of two perfect squares. So it's c plus 2, c minus 2 equals 0. Now, current is representing speed here, so it can't be negative. So c equals negative 2. I immediately throw that away. Uh, but this is the one I want, c equals 2. So I see that c equals 2. What are my units? It's the rate. It's the speed of the water. It's the current. So it's 2 miles per hour. And so we were actually able to find the current of the water just knowing the information about this kayaker, kayaker's ability to go upstream and downstream. Pretty cool.